Yep, that harpoon will hit. It does not seem to be fiendish, just a very big creature, as it takes 10 piercing damage. Alright, I'll meet you guys at the bottom of the round. Alright, Philia, you get to go first. Oh, I get to go first. Nice. Yes. Uh, that's great weapon mastery. I'm gonna hit this thing. Yep, great weapon mastery. Oh, uh, I get a third hit because I crit. All right, so you you great weaponed all of them though, right? Yes. All right, so did you reckless by the way? Yes. So that's gonna be first twenty eight on the first one. Then that's gonna be twenty three, twenty six, thirty six on the second. And then I get a third. That That's one will enough. also barely hit. No, you're reckless. You, uh, you're great weapon. You're great weapon, but you did yeah. reckless. So that also, yes. yes. And that's enough to put this one down as it just kind of convinces <laughs> as you literally break <laughs> this anchor across it back and forth. Was that really I'm not raging. I didn't Julia? say I was raging, if that means anything. Uh, the rage would probably... have given it back a uh, 90 Nine. Nine. That wouldn't have Actually, let me let me let me put this math back. All right, so that would have given an extra six here, and it would have taken twenty. It doesn't. It's not dead yet. Then, yeah, it was just gained nine more HP basically. Yeah, it's Absolutely. barely like rage was the difference between it living and dying. Yasana, I'm kind of fine with that right now. Yasana, you are up. That'll miss. Were you testing to see if it resisted thunder, I assume? No, I think she's actually made a difference to the uh, macro and she yeah. wanted to test that. She was testing thunder. I'll test it for you, Risu. <laughs> I think it's uh, Eel's turn. Yep. All right then. Oh wait, no, you get a you get a bonus. Yeah, I think she gets a chance to attack. Do you want me to roll your attack? Because you're saying it's not working. Oh, there we go. Yep, and that'll hit. And with that attack, you basically chop its head clear off as it kind of falls in the water. This one is now deceased. Yeah. All right then. Yeah, that one is now deceased. Azul will bring the apparatus up. I think I said the apparatus can move 45 in water. I gotta double check though. I know I gave it good water speeds. I don't remember what they are off the top of my head because it technically has two of them. Oh no, it can move 60. So the apparatus starts moving forward really quickly at this point. Saren. Gonna prep an action, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call out to it. Don't know if it understands or not. I'm gonna call out, "Leave, and we won't hurt you, or I won't at least." And right. um, the trigger is if the thing approaches, it's gonna take a shot, or she's gonna take okay. a shot. And Ojavu is uh, just gonna move behind the tank and take the dodge action. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you not yet Shiki. Another one who has been hiding behind this corner here rushes out, getting right up next to Felia and the crab, and it attempts to bite Felia again. This one attempts to bite Felia too. Okay. And this one's attack will hit for 28 piercing. Roll a con save. I'm good. You're super good. <laughs> and then this one is going to swing its tail around at Yasada. Oh, there's two more. No, it has two attacks, I think. It has two attacks. 
No, I was saying the eels. Yeah. I just noticed the one down there. I didn't notice the other side had one too. Yeah, oh, no, that one will miss with its tail, unfortunately. Shiki, you're up. I'm still Actually, holding Saran, my you should get your uh, out action because that attacked. I'm still holding my action. I, I was talking to this one. Fair, fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shiki. I'm, I'm basically training it that, like, this one uh, didn't maybe didn't hear. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, going after one nearby the crab. Okay. So I would have to re so I reload and. I've got, my, I've got my grip back, so I'm going to buy with a violent. Hmm. That will hit for 9 damage. Nine damage plus... Extra 4. Yep, 13. Then I've got to reload, and that'll be my turn. Yep. Alright then. The last one then... It seems to be making aggressive motions in, so you could probably right. get the feeling that you need to attack it. Don't you have three attacks, though? She has Re to use them to reload. Reload, reload, fire, reload. I've only got one oh, shot. Oh, right, because you you took an attack before. All right. It's yeah. It's it's literally I it's literally a harpoon gun. Yeah, like I'm, it's, I, I'm, I'm, gim I'm gimped with my gun at my, my my attack actions at the moment. Yeah, because underwater, otherwise you'd be attacking at disadvantage all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, All right, so yeah, that's this one not, moves up aggressively, so you get an attack. It's not sharpshooter, because I didn't call it. Yep, so that one will actually hit. It'll hit for... 26. Uh, the thunder does not seem to be resisted, so it's going to take a 26 points of damage. There you go, Risu. It is going to attempt to lurch its head out to bite at uh, Yasana, which will miss. <laughs> and it's going to... No, it did not resist. And it will swing its tail around at Philia... And it will miss Philia as well. Oh, nice. Barely, but it missed. Should have moved up and gotten an advantage. Philia. It didn't... I don't think it had quite enough movement to get that far. These things, if they were to hit, they do nasty amounts of damage, but they are not hit very much. Uh, let's see. Do I want to rage? Nah. I'll just reckless wait up and master the one that bit me. Alright, so the one to the left. Okay. So reckless great weapon, both, both hit. will hit, so that's both gonna for be 20 25, 25, so fifty damage in total. This thing it's it's bloody at this point as you've taken several large chunks out of it. Yep. I accept everybody else expect everybody else to be able to take it out. Alright, Isana, you're up. Which one did Philly hit? Philly hit the one over here. Alright, so you're taking the lower one. That does hit for 12 thunder, so 25 damage. And that will also hit for 14 damage. Fun fact, these are a slightly modified aquatic T-Rex. <laughs> yes, a T-Rex has that shit AC. Mm -hmm. Beast normally it is bloodied, it. but not super bloodied. By Both way, of them are bloodied now, though. By the way, I would love to get this module from you at some point. What module? The map, is it looks like it's modular. Um, it is modular, yes. I, I actually, there's a, if you know some of the cave maps I've used before, there's a flooded version of them. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so big, because these are normally supposed to, like, the upper area you came in is supposed to be 30 by 30. It's 60 by 60 for this, because mm -hmm. I've made it all bigger. Um, all right, so that was it for that. Now Azul gets to attack with the apparatus, and she's going to attack the one that she is next to. She's just going to put up the crab's dukes, and she is going to crit dealing 33 damage. Not quite enough to kill, as the other one brings it, uh, and then she brings the claw around for an uppercut, and she just sends the devil eel flying up. I say it's a devil eel. It's not actually a devil eel. It's a lightning eel. It's a big old electric eel. 
sends it flying up into the uh, top of the cavern here as it impacts the wall and goes limp. This hmm. one's dead. They are not that durable. They just hit really hard. Saran. Saran's going to send uh, Ojavu forward um, as she reloads, and he's going to attack. Multi attack. Okay. Ooh, a hit. crit. That crit will hit very. Uh, hit, that crit will hit, of course, for 13 damage. The claws will also hit for another 12. This one is not looking too good. And then she's going to take her attack. I've I've got a bonus to reload in case. Yep. Yeah. And that one will hit, and he will take 19 damage, which is enough to put him down as his body starts convulsing. As the you basically he opens his mouth when you take the shot. You put the uh, he's. These lightning shurikens basically into his mouth, and he just starts convulsing as his body seems to explode, like from the thunderous cracks inside, and he just falls over, floating up to the surface, dead. You can see a slight glint from inside of his jaw fall to the ground. I'm gonna go check that out. If we're out of initiative, you are out of initiative. All right, I'm gonna go check that out. If... What you see before you appears to be some sort of bead. Like a pearl, almost, but not quite. Does it appear to be magical? Um, you're not sure, to be honest. I mean, it, it appears to be like some kind of small black spear, so you know it's not really a pearl. You don't think it's really made anything, like, made similarly? Well, um, if we've got some it time... It does appear to have a magical aura to it, if you'd wish to identify it. Yeah. If we have some time... Can I check... Can I check the two layers that the other two came from? All right, so uh, while you're investigating that field, you come over here and take a look up. You see that what looks to be another passageway that actually goes up a little bit. You mm. feel like you can see a surface to water there, but you're not 100% sure yet. Um, all right, so with that identify, you identify this is a beat of force. <sighs> okay. Only one? You've only found one here, which is strange, because you feel like they usually come in groups. Um, what do I know about a beat of force from that identify? You know, a beat of force is that you can use an action to throw it up to 60 feet, and it explodes on impact is in destroyed. However, every creature within 10 foot radius of where the bead landed must make a deck save or take a bunch of force damage. I say a bunch, it's only 5d4. And then a spear of translucent force encloses the area trapping them. Hmm. Breathable air can pass through the wall, but that's it. No attack or other effect can. You know that the uh, creature inside the bubble can kind of push it to move it around, but other people can lift it up and carry it around effortlessly. Hamster ball. And that the uh, bubble only lasts for about a minute. Hmm. Um, and do I know what the save DC is? Uh, DC, DC 15 dex. But you do find it weird that there's only one here because you do know that they usually come in pay, uh, multiple sets. So, Fluffy, what are you looking at? Fluffy? Hmm? What you looking at? What you, what you looking at? Nothing. I... Is that really your name? That's a interesting name. I like it. All right, Fufu. Uh, so do you say there's like a air it's pocket? A passage. Yeah, if you see the uh, little uh, thing going around here, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm using on this map to signify a passageway that goes up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna poke my head up. All right, you're going to poke your head up. Would I uh, know uh, anything about where that is, where that goes? You do know that there are actually that this area connects in several places, and that in. Caligia's lair, there are small portions of cave that do have air within them. Shiki, as you poke your head up, I'm going to quickly move you to another map. You are going to be looking at the lower left in a moment. I still need to pull Shiki under this map. Shron's just going to explain. In some places, there are little places where people can sit and breathe. Uh, some adventurers are not able to stay underwater for very long. Yeah, so, Shiki, if you look in the lower right, actually, I meant to say, yeah, yeah. you can actually poke your head above the surface of the water here. There is probably a good 5, 10 feet of air above the surface of the water. You can kind of see that things do progress out a little ways ahead. You think you can see shore, potentially, but it's hard to make out. 
Go, I, I stick my head back under. Guys, guys, get off here. All right, All right. let me move. Fine. Let me move everyone there now. All right, let me grab the rest of the people out. So the apparatus is going to be moved down to here. Let me grab out Yasana, Ophelia, Sarun, Burr, oh. and I'll put Azul off the map. Can you uh, take Saron back on the, the thing? Or I can. Thank you. Because if you if you bring her out first, she's always. I can change. Me. I can change who is on top and who is on bottom, and I put okay. the bear on bottom. Oh my. Yep. She prefers to be on top. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is actually the exact same map uh, map set as before, but it's not double scaled. Right. So if I go to here. Uh, I just want to generate perception just to see if I can hear or hear or see anything. Okay, feel free. Cause I feel like we just kind of we've been charging forward a lot, and it's gonna kill us. Same thing. Yeah, you. Yeah, because I haven't actually done many sneak attacks yet. Just one that we destroyed. Yeah. Right. So, uh, Sarun, so Jeeves, your character and the bear, they don't really seem to sense anything particularly out of the ordinary here. Uh, did I actually set up all the dynamic right now? I did, good. I was on top of things. You saw it in the same way. You don't seem to sense anything particularly out of the ordinary. Things seem to be relatively calm here. Like, you can see uh, strange lizards and whatnot, presumably blind, going along the uh, walls and whatnot. Shiki, it's the same thing. You don't see anything particularly out of the ordinary, but you can feel as though like, your tails are twitching, as though there's something is nearby. Like, like some source of magic is nearby. Hmm. But, do any of you just feel a bit of an ominous presence nearby? It doesn't no. feel exactly ominous. The only ominous presence I feel is from Fluffy. I'm going to stand up. Uh, stand That's out. a compliment. Do you need some healing, Fluffy? I think I'm good. You're bleeding Ooh, I see a passage over here. Philia, just... as you rush off in that passage and take a look in, you see a great sword. Ooh. I'm sorry, immediately run sword. <laughs> I'll go grab it. Dead. All right, you pick up the great sword. It feels warm to the touch. The um, the hilt and the uh, not the scabbard, whatever you hold it by. Can't get the word. Best that is hilt. the hilt, actually. Yep. Yes, the hilt, as well as the cross guard, appears to be, like, it's their orangish color. You can kind of see a pattern of flames on them. Ooh! Ooh, a flame tongue. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it to Yasana. You, you just handed Yasana a random sword. Yes, because it's a giant greatsword. She's a sword I, person. She uses, she uses swords, I use axes. That is fair. You might want to identify that one. Do we want to spend ten minutes every time we pick up an item, or do we want to do it all kind of at once? Well, you never know. It might be a better upgrade than the sword she's got. It could be, because I can spend ten minutes if you'd like. I'm I'm fine spending ten minutes just to quickly have a... All right. ten mi I don't think ten minutes is going to kill us. All right. well, so, <laughs> random question. What is everyone's passive? Uh, 18. Uh, passive perception. And I've got plus five to my passive because of smelling, so eighteen to bear. Eighteen to both. Uh, Seventeen. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> make sure I do this correctly. <coughs> you do have a plus to this, which I didn't put in. So it's 11 minutes for that ritual to go through, as I recall. Yeah. 10. Uh, 11, because it's got a one. cast time of 1. Yeah. So, 11. Mm. About halfway through the ritual, um, everyone, actually, this rolled shit. Yeah. Rolled pretty shit. Everyone notices a creature starting to lurk up on them from back here. From back. You're on a different layer. I think. Uh... There. No, I don't think I was. Oh, From so. back here. Oh, it's another it's one. It's trying to remain hidden and submerged in the water. <coughs> I 
Uh, I shoot it. <laughs> yeah, give me a moment. I gotta reload again because it. it I don't yeah. know what it is with roll twenty that makes it so it stops registering. I've, I've, uh, no, I've had it today as well. I've, I've had it doing it on me. Today. It might be Firefox. I'm not using Firefox. I don't like using Firefox. Oh. I thought you had to for some reason. Maybe it was just while recording. No, I only have to when I record, actually. Yeah. For some reason, Chrome fixed it, so I don't have to use that for Chrome that anymore. I, I, I can always use it. Now. All right, so, Sheik, you were going to just take a shock? Uh, yeah, I literally, quick <laughs> quick draw, pull out Big B. I would All right, probably go for do it. the same if I saw Sheiky doing that and just drop the uh, um, identifying. Yep. All right, so One. go ahead, take your shots. Hits. That's good. Two. That's also good. And we'll make the next one violent. Okay. And that's gonna do another. Okay. Just give me, just give me a second. I actually need to remember why. And no. the thundermonger hits. That's gonna be another twenty-four damage. And that the additional six. Damage. six. You, you're cleaning with the uh, fire, the fire from one and, two, one and three, right? Yeah, I, I have it because it's okay. still in the water. Okay. At this point, this creature howls in pain. You've already recognized what it is. See, there's She's another one in here. She's going to call out in Draconic, Go away! You don't hear much of a response, but it quickly starts swimming away. Reload. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to reload myself. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm going to be on a... Does that, does that interrupt the ritual? Yes. It did interrupt the ritual, yes. <sighs> should have just let... Should have just... Should have kept on with that one. For that. I probably would have had to roll concentration anyways because gunfire in my ear. Well, still the gunfire. If somebody had actually attacked, it would have been really bad for you guys. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we're all grouped up. Well, uh, in that case, maybe we should actually just leave that then for the time being. Would you like me off. to uh, check again? We might be here for a while. Yeah, fine. Let, let your son feel test it. So, your son, are you taking the sword and looking it over? Can I roll Arcana on it? Roll a investigation real quick. Yep. I mean, well, while I was <coughs> ritualizing it, could I have done the same? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So Sarah will definitely notice this, and it's useful because no, you only speak Orin. I speak when you when you know, and it's awkward. yeah, you know that's I, I know that I'm gonna get to that shortly. I want to yeah. see what, yes, uh, Risu. When you know but, one part of Prime. yeah, I know you know because yeah. they're all just different dialects. Yep. All right, uh, Yusana doesn't actually notice anything. However, when uh, Sarah was looking it over, she did find glyphs that she recognized. It doesn't look; it was a primordial language of some sort, but it wasn't Orin. She believes it was um. What is the fire one? Ignis? Ignan, yeah. I speak Aquin. Yeah, Ignan. Yeah, Ignan. You speak Aquin. So, you have a rough feeling of what it is. You feel as though it's saying something like a, like a word, or a phrase rather, on it that says, quiet, Colonel, that says, flame on. Um, Get out. Saron's going to hold the sword, and she's going to say, um, just back up a second. And uh, <coughs> in her best Ignan, she's going to say, flame on! You can feel as though there is a draw from the sword, as though it's looking for a link to the person who spoke the phrase, but nothing happens. Awesome. I think you have to attune to it. Uh, here, try it again. She's going to hand it back to you, Zana. That thing's heavy. How do you guys swing these things? Oh, oh you uh, want heavy? I'll, uh, I'll just hand her, like, my spare axe. She's going <laughs> to reach out, grab it, and go... Oh. Um, Yeah. <laughs> You can you can take this back. She's just tipping the handle towards you because she can't hardly lift it. I'll take it. <laughs> Weak. Hey, I don't need to be strong. It's gonna take a half hour to attune, to, or I think a full hour to attune. To. I gotta double check that. Yeah, it's a short rest. It's a short rest. It's a short rest, which is an hour. So you're gonna have to wait to the next rest in order to attune to it. And I can identify it while you're attuning. Yeah, you can fully identify it while you attune to it. Mm-hmm. All right, so you're going to keep exploring for the time being? Yeah, so we're heading north. All right. The room itself does seem to be, for the most part, relatively empty. Uh, a number of the uh, 
stalactites and stalagmites moving around from it or moving around in this room. Nothing too particularly fancy. You see a few passages cutting off here and there. Up on this ridge up here, for those of you that glance there, you do see what looks to be like a small pedestal, however. Hmm. Wow. Does it just appear right religious? Yeah, just, I love it. it does not you. appear to be religious in any way. On this pedestal, however, you see that there are several gems. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Five gems arranged in about a pentagram type shape. And in the center of this, there is what appears to be a black pearl. As what color like are the gems? Pearl? You have a, you, you recognize these gems pretty easily. There is a topaz, a blue spinel, two alexanderites, and another blue spinel. Uh, does it appear to be the same pearl as what I had? Um, what kind of pearl do you have? The, the one that I picked up earlier, the black pearl. Oh, no, it does not appear to be like what a beta force looks like. It seems to be something different. It appears okay. just to be a black pearl. Um, do these appear to be the same things that I've got? No. Okay, good. Um, um, could I insight or whatever to figure out whether touching these, moving these, is a really bad idea or not? Go ahead and roll it. Insight? Yeah, insight. <coughs> you don't feel like exactly it would be a horrible idea. You're not sure if it'd be a horrible idea. You do feel like they were put there for a reason. You do know yourself that there was somebody, a, re a, um, a scholar who was supposed to be investigating Pelagia. You get the feeling this might be something that she has left behind. Mm hmm and it's not, uh, it doesn't seem to be religious or connected. It doesn't seem to be religious. There doesn't seem to be any active magic about it. They were just arranged there in a pattern for some reason. Okay. Um, you I'm do going know to... that they, uh, the, the scholar does seem to be a little odd at times. I'm going to um, attempt to memorize the pattern of the, of the stones, yep. and I'm going to swipe them. <laughs> All right. And you swipe them pretty easily. Nothing seems to happen. When you go to grab the black pearl, roll a wisdom save. Okay. Hey, look, I just got proficiency in that. Not that amount. <laughs> you fail your wisdom save. As you reach forward, you grab the black pearl. Your body, what is visible, seems to decay away, leaving you what seems to be a living skeleton. Cool. Hey, guys, um... does this make me look skinny? I just leaned over to Shiki. Is that supposed to happen? I don't know. Do you want me to put it down? I don't know. Maybe we should put it down. Am I am I still holding it? Uh, you're still holding it for now, yes. All right. Uh, if I set it back down, do I still appear to be a skeleton? You still appear to be a skeleton. All right. I'll you just keep it then. as this goes on that you don't actually seem to be breathing anymore. Uh, as though you don't need to breathe anymore. Cool. Well, uh. You know, I was oh. hoping to have a cute character for a little while, but... <laughs> You're the one who touched the Black Pearl! Sure. Um, <laughs> is, well, are, we, uh... are we clear to, like, moonlight or anything up above? Nope. Okay, nope. cool. Well, um, yeah, well... Um, huh. I'm well... not quite a high enough cleric for my god to listen to my prayers directly. I have to talk to the priest for that. Well, um, Azul will kind of speak up. Um, I don't think I can help that either. Um, we should. Well, yeah, yeah. I, well, we I heard a tale about this before, though. Uh, we're going to need to find some way to remove that curse. Well, well, well um, it's maybe this. Maybe the next. Maybe we should be a bit more careful the next time we go to pick things up. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to go look up here. <laughs> that is up a ledge, so you won't be able to just simply climb up there without a uh, athletics. And it is slippery, so you have a disadvantage. Since I'm already cursed, I'm just going to pocket that pearl. I mean, no one else wants it anyways, so... Fair. <laughs> Should I just vault Shiki over? Uh, I would say that would counteract the disadvantage and give you advantage on the check. What, athletics? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing athletics. I'll allow that to be uh, Philia's. But Philia will have it neutral. Got it. If you want to do a video, wants to do it. All right, so Shiki, you are pretty easily vaulted up onto that ledge, and then I'll climb up. Mm -hmm. And you start to climb up there, and then you just kind of you grab onto a piece of moss, and the moss slides away from the fall, the wall, and you just fall right back down. 
You know what? Um, I yeah, just I forgot about Go something. Arcana. Go ahead, roll an arcana. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ladder up with my immovable rods. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, we have those. <laughs> <laughs> like we have like five immovable rods between this party. <laughs> 